Hi, I'm Al Red Dog Weber, a legend in my own mind. I uh, started skiing Aspen in 1952. In those days, Opry Ski, we would either go to the Red Onion or the Jerome Bar. We'd go to the Red Onion to sing college songs, and if you wanted to pick up a dinner date, we'd go to the Jerome Bar. And somewhere along the line, after I moved to California, we formed a country western group called the Wilshire Boulevard Buffalo Hunters. And I, have, of course, I had, of course, uh, met and become friends of uh, become a friend of Werner Kuster, the owner of the Red Onion, who had bought that establishment around 1947, as I remember. And he booked us into the Red Onion uh, to play the Opre Ski Show. And a phenomenon occurred, which I don't think could happen anyplace else or ever again. We just uh, got up there and improvised, pretty much. Uh, if I do something funny and people laughed, why, I'd leave it in. Otherwise, we wouldn't repeat it. And we entertained there, Opre Ski at the Red Onion, uh, I believe we started in 68, and we played through, I believe, 1971 for two or three weeks uh, in the spring, a Valkyrie ski show, as I say, at the Red Onion. And it was, it was interesting because we never rehearsed. we just meet the afternoon of the opening, and we just kind of start running through the, the numbers that we were going to play. We'd say, oh, yeah, we got that, and then we'd do something else, and we'd do that. And I, I kind of, on, uh, uh, I did one on uh, the Sheik of Araby, where I would go down and get a tablecloth off of the table there and put it over my head with a, what we called uh, an ear, you know, an ear, ear brassiere, hold it on. And, uh, and then I would, uh, my buddy on the guitar would play the Sheik of Araby, and at a, at a stop I would undo a button on one of the western shirt pockets and then do a dance and then, and, you know, and start to do a strip. And, of course, we stopped it being a family show, even though we were nicknamed the Filthy Five. But I remember one particular episode. We played um, White Shotgun, which was a, which was a song about a, a white shotgun, about a shotgun wedding, actually. And we had a white shotgun which we loaded with confetti. And at a certain point in the, mo in the song, I would pick it up and fire it in the air over the audience, and the confetti would float down. Well, one day, the guy, one time, the guy that usually uh, modified the shell for us with the confetti was out of town, so one of the guys in the band said, oh, I can do it. So at that point in the, uh, in the song, I grabbed the white shotgun, pointed it up, fired it, and it blew a hole about that big in the proscenium over the stage. He had, uh, shall we say, he hadn't re removed enough uh, powder, <laughs> gunpowder from the shell, and I still shudder when I think of what could have happened had I not pointed that shotgun up in the air. But we had, uh, we packed that place every afternoon and uh, at intermission, we did break for about 15 minutes. I think we started playing at 5 until 8, as I remember. And, uh, and nobody ever left. It was, uh, it was an incredibly successful thing, and we did all kinds of comedy and, and jokes. And, and we incorporated uh, one of the old townies, uh, Dean Billings, God rest his soul. He played uh, an instrument I've never seen before or since. It was a bass mandolin. It was the size of a double bass, and, but it was shaped like a man. Anyway, he was a wonderful character. We had, we had more darn fun with that, uh, with that band at the Red Onion. But uh, as I say, it was, it was something that was so spontaneous and so improvised as we went along that uh, uh, I don't think we, I don't think you could ever duplicate it, or I don't think it would ever. Uh, I don't think it would ever succeed any place else, particularly in these days and times. So I have very fond memories of the Red Onion and of Werner Kuster, who was our employer and our good friend. <laughs>